Okay, this button circled there is on the Amazon Echo Flex, and the idea is you press the microphone mute button, uh, it turns red, and the device claims that it's not listening to your voice anymore. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are very concerned about these devices for the manufacturer to put that button there. Question I had, does it actually do anything, or does it just simply turn some LEDs on to make you feel comfortable? Uh, the only way to really sort that down is to take it apart and do some reverse engineering. On this photograph here, what I've done is extracted the circuit board uh, and I've uh, extracted the parts which are most related to it. Um, this is the microphone here. This is, of course, what listens to the uh, the voice. Now, there's a, micro uh, there's a microphone mute button, uh, but I don't uh, show that here. It's way off in the assembly below. But that signal eventually makes its way up into this part here. So this is the start of our journey basically here. This is the uh, device which gets a signal from the mute button. And this is the end of our journey here. That's, of course, the microphone. Now, this thing's marked uh, CFJ, or perhaps ICFJ, so that's, that's not very meaningful, unfortunately. It's really hard to sort down these uh, devices. There are guidebooks out there called SMP guidebooks or SMP codebooks. You can type that letter in. Unfortunately, manufacturers haven't agreed upon the lettering, so you end up having to uh, sort of uh, guess as to what the part is. Or, even better, if you're doing reverse engineering, you just simply take the packaging off, decap it, and uh, figure out the semiconductor. And that, of course, is a really powerful technique because you can then get the die. So this is the part, ICFJ. Uh, this is what the microphone mute button runs into. And some very helpful text here, L14D. Uh, that means it's uh, an inverting uh, shot key uh, device, which is really ideal for this uh, particular function. Let's go to the schematic of what the engineers are doing. Uh, basically, you have a button here. That this is the mute button. runs into this device called a Schmidt inverter. And then this becomes a signal which then goes into the rest of the circuitry. Uh, what happens when you have a, a button uh, which is uh, pulled up by a uh, resistor like this? So we have a resistor here and a button. Uh, you have something called a make or break. Is it's just closing? What happens? The switch will, can uh, make or break just like this for a little bit before it finally settles to its final uh, uh, destination. The problem is all this here can be misinterpreted by digital logic. What a Schmidt uh, inverter does, or any Schmidt device is, it takes all this and convert it to a single uh, stable edge, which is what you need when you're uh, doing digital design. Okay, let's sort out where this device uh, signals goes to next. And uh, that's what I circled here in the next part. It's marked uh, VC74. Now here I don't have to de-encapsulate this part because I do know that that's a, a dual uh, D flip-flop. And that's kind of expected actually, a really classic circuit in electrical engineering is the one that'll show uh, on the next uh, slide. Uh, what we have here is the uh, a little bit more details. Basically, there's two flip-flops. You can see now the signal from the uh, Schmidt inverter is basically going to both. Uh, these are known as uh, edge-triggered D flip-flops. So basically, anytime you get a rising edge of a signal, uh, whatever is on the D gets latched and then presented to the Q and Q bar uh, output. I kind of expect the circuitry to look like this is a classic divide by two. What happens is every time there's a an edge on the uh, clock input, it, re it samples the data input and presents the Q. Because you get the Q bar uh, sort of uh, coming back as an invert, what happens is this signal basically changes state between 0 and 1 uh, every time there's an edge. But um, doing a little tracing, it actually, it's a little more complicated than that. And it looks like rather than uh, becoming the signal that I thought would be the mute signal, uh, it keeps on the journey. There's basically two outputs of the uh, 74 package because there's basically two flip-flops. They seem to run into this part here. Uh, same problem, mark C-O-O-R, or perhaps C-0-0-R. Same difficulty with MT part, SMT parts. Uh, the code here uh, is a little bit obscure. Again, nice thing, uh, do a little reverse engineering, uh, de-encapsulate the package, and uh, all of its secrets become known to me. Uh, it's marked a 2G-0-0-D. Uh, now, for me, that's very meaningful. Uh, zero, 00 is a two-input NAND gate. Uh, that's a classic thing. Also, the part here is TI, Texas Instrument, the mass copyright, that's what an M stands for, is uh, 2001. With all that information, I actually can go in a TI uh, database and find out that, indeed, this is a uh, single um, uh, NAND gate. And uh, then this allows me to put a little more of the circuit together, in fact, almost all the circuitry. And let's explain how it works. And we have then the confidence to say whether or not this mute button's real. This circuit here basically is a switch debouncer. So that goes in, puts a nice edge to two flip-flops that are in parallel, runs into two to, into this AND gate, uh, probably NAND gate. Here we can see the LED that turns red. And uh, that's my first real awesome thing to learn. So basically, if the... Uh, 
microphone's turned off, this LED gets turned on because what we have here is a P MOSFET. It's a power transistor basically. It controls the power that goes to the microphone. So if the microphone's powered on, uh, this this MOSFET will be enabled. And then of course the circuitry can sample that and it comes back into two D flip-flops. Now it's interesting, these D flip-flops are actually in parallel and they appear to be redundant. But someone suggested to me that's because that it's for ESD reasons. They want to make sure when the uh, flip-flop is, uh, it doesn't, if it hit by an ESD event, it doesn't make a false uh, registration, which is certainly a possible explanation. But the real key here is that this is all controlled by the switch. It's not controlled by a microprocessor that's setting, in, setting the flip-flop. And the LED here is tied in such a way that the processor can't affect it. Now, there is actually is a reset to the flip-flop. I mean, it actually runs off to the SOIC. Um, of course, that could then imply, though, that the SOIC could actually still override the mic uh, muting function. But even if it did, the LED would actually turn off. Now, of course, it's really interesting. I, I basically, this is the second part of the video. If you look at my YouTube channel, I've, uh, I've actually already had a teardown of this particular um, a device. Uh, and uh, if we go further, we can actually see that... Um, here's a little video I've actually inserted. What, uh, what happens here is... Uh, the uh, assembly, uh, I press the button, of course, as you might imagine, uh, the um, you know the uh, lights turn on, just what the mute button's supposed to do, um, and they press it again, of course, it'll turn off. Now, if you flip it over, uh, I'm uh, already quite a bit way through the teardown, actually, and there is no SOAC on the board. You can see it's missing entirely. I've already moved the AD to convert one of the microphones and the SOAC. Uh, so really building confidence, indeed, this microphone mute button is very real. And what it does, it basically turns off the microphones. And of course, that really does a guarantee that uh, the um, function works. The reason for the reset, of course, is that when you power the unit on, I think most customers want the mute microphones to actually be working. So there we go. Uh, if you want more information on this, I have also more detailed photographs on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.